still smoking. Cool. Minion. Poor car. I wrote that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adam C and welcome to a very early meet at Cobham Services. These are the JDM versus the World Loss and we are meeting here to convoy to Brands Hatch for TunaFest 2021. Uh, I'm going off limited sleep. I was out celebrating last night, hitting half a million subscribers, which obviously happened a few weeks ago. So right now in our convoy, we have spread out the cars nicely. Golf R, Evo, S14, and several blue Subarus with an RX-8 in the middle with vents that don't vent. But I think it's time to start up the cars and convoy to Brands Hatch. <laughs> trouble with the Brands Hatch events, especially the larger ones like TunaFest, is the queue to get in is always time consuming. So whilst we wait, a quick mention from this video sponsor, Car Vertical. As we learned in a previous video, my 350Z has had no previous accidents, sneaky mileage rollbacks or thefts, but some cars aren't quite as lucky. It's essential to use their platform when in the market to buy a car, otherwise you might end up with cars like this, Nissan Qashqai which has had serious front end damage after having been involved in an accident. They even uncover photos of the damage from various national registries. We even have this BMW X5 that's been reported as stolen. Stolen vehicles are taken away from you without reimbursement. So not only will this vital information save you from traveling to see an undesirable vehicle, but it will save you the hell of having your car taken away from you, having just bought it. Check out this BMW M4. The mileage all looks consistent and the car probably is an attractive buy, but car Versical proves otherwise with their evidence of a major, significant accident in its past life. So if you're planning on buying a vehicle or wondering about your current vehicle and want to use this service for yourself, just follow the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your report. So we are in and ready to look around. So I am parked up on the JDM versus the world stand and it's looking to be raining throughout the whole day. I started wiping down the car and then I gave up. But I'm parked next to a very nice RX-7 in this colour flip paint job. Looks incredible with the plexiglass headlights too. Pop up delete. And cars have started drifting on the track. That looks like an R33 going into a figure of eight. Chucking it around. Oh, he stalled it. So in front of me, as you can probably tell, is a Ford section. All the Fiestas are doing what they do best. But I'd rather pay attention to this boosted barge with the chrome orange wheels, maybe? With the midnight purple paint job. And everyone is fascinated in the pops and bangs, and absolutely no one has drawn any attention to the drifting. And that was a lie. We've also got a 50th anniversary Nissan 370Z, and a wide-bodied E46, and he's cut away at some of the rear lights. Obviously, normally it would have, like, that section there. So that looks nice and different, looks a bit more like the compacts and the interior matches too with the black and yellow seats. The Saab is showing off his cloths. Is that a white chaser drift car? Because everyone loves a white chaser. Here's hoping that the commentators, oh, he span it. Oh, it was actually a Mark 1 Escort Estate that was popping and banging. Let's give it a bit of time, let's have a look. I just presumed it was one of the many Fiestas, but no. Yeah, that's good colour matching, the flames and the orange wheels. <laughs> and feast your eyes on this Audi. Not only does he have brave wheels, but the bumper is very intricate. He's got the more modern grille on the older Audi and 
Take a look at that bonnet. These vent vents, but this vent doesn't vent at all. He seems to be part of the hashtag unfinished club. But that's one of the most entertaining sights I've seen today so far. Let's have a look around the back, past the wide arches, blacked out rears and a fat rear bumper. We have the ST, which is the Send It Warrior in blue. The Send It Warrior is also called the Sloth, as you can see from his dancing friends. And along with the blue, there's also a lot of purple, some actually holographic headlights. We got the two-tone Mini, blue with red, MX-5, carbon spoiler. Oh, hello, love. Yeah, I'm gonna walk away from the pops and bangs, just for now. We've got a green V8 drift car. What is that? What have we got? It's an E36. Sounds supercharged as well. We've got this black and gold E46 here. This BMW has all of the stickers of all of the brands he uses, the gold grills matching some of the interior and dashboard. And he has opted for all of the options on the front end, splitters, canards, grills and mesh. It is mental. And in front of this E46 we've got the RX-8 and the Safari Nissan Micra. I am really enjoying looking at what everyone does to these Nissan Micras. They're becoming a bit of a trend to, uh, to modify at the moment with the Microsoft sticker. It's even got the spot lights on the front and a snorkel for all of its off-road driving. We have the Suki Zoo Swift, not Suzuki, Suki Zoo with yellow teeth. And over here we have a British Touring Car Championship styled Ford Focus. <laughs> but as you get closer up, you're gonna love this. All of it is hand painted, even the Dunlop branding. You can see it's all been hand painted all over. The white's been hand painted, I think. So from a few meters back, it looks a bit more genuine, but when you get close, you can see the kind of effort that's gone into it. Also, this white has definitely been hand painted. You can see some of these stickers are real stickers. In fact, I think these are vinyl. And it's even got a rather appropriate brand's hat sticker on the back. They've even painted the surrounds of the vents and the dashboard inside. That's been hand painted too. And the top and the bottom of the steering wheel has been painted by hand as well. And the vents don't vent. The monkey doesn't like it. Well, it certainly is entertaining to look at. We have the baby little Daihatsu Kopen. He's seen better days behind him. I've seen a few cars with these light bars and they've got bars on the back, the front and on the side as well. Maybe that's a new trend. There's a rude BMW M2 over there. I have just heard a late arrival. That looks like a Zenki S14 making a lot of sounds. Beginning at the main entrance, we've got the old Toyota Crown, who has parked next to a Civic with a wing. And all of his rear interior has fallen out, and his spoiler is actually mounted to a carbon fibre boot. So all of this section are named the Sleeper Crew, so I am anticipating them to all have RB26s, LSX V8s, or even an SR20 under the bonnet, but I very much doubt that they do. So as we walk down the Sleeper Crew, we've got the ST with the blue windscreen matching the paintwork. That's actually quite a nice colour match. And the Passat CC in blue with yellow headlights. That's not an M2, but I am sure he is used to the send. Ah, who's your mate? He's actually got a copy of the Mexico City Revs magazine that I wrote a special feature on. There you go, Adam C. And someone has only brought half of their car along. They've cut the whole Audi in half. I don't know how they've driven here because there's no driver's side. I can't see anything here. Oh look, it's Babs, the Fiesta. And I'd be so tempted just to take the B off that sticker. Oh wow, beyond the Mark II MX-5, we have this blue and black Nissan 370Z with gold details. Those wheels are absolutely incredible. I like the colour coding because he's got various similar tips to mine. Blue through to gold, blue through to gold. There is another Ford section, a lineup of Fiestas and a Focus with some angular holes cut into its bonnet and a Sierra RS Cosworth. The Celica is next to the Peugeot with his loop strap. It's not Japanese, despite what it claims. Someone's popping R. Yes, of course, it's a Focus ST. Talking of Focuses, this one's apparently sitting pretty. It does begin a sticker showcase. I'm working on my door. Oh look, you've got Randall, you've got Boo, Mike, Sully, Boo again. And the Jazzy 350Z is part next to an R32 and a Nissan 300ZX. This little Citroen C1 is actually sat pretty nicely, like a little lunchbox on wheels. It seems Luke's thirsty. We have Pengu, the angry acorn, and the next assortment of cars 
cars is quite obviously the Nissan GTR section. One, two, three, four, five, many of them. I'm not going to bother counting. Starting with the white one with the red details, including on the edges of the carbon vents. It's almost like a competition of how many vents and holes you can have in the GTR's bonnet. This GTR is showing off its rose gold inlet and there's Mario. So there he is. Mario and, and Bowser. There he is. Someone's anti-lagging and smoking rather badly. I think he's, no, no I was going to say he's cleared it out, but no, it's still smoking. As grey as this one looks, it's still rather colourful. There is Goldie, the Litchfield's GTR. The splitter is kind of restricting my room to walk through. Oh, that's quite a unique wrap next door to him. In fact, the colours on this wrap seem to be shared by a couple of others on display, obviously resembling the colours of the GTR logo. And if you like me like colours, you'll love the colour flip wrapped GTR over here. And this one displaying its red wheels has a bit of an easter egg on the back. He has two ghouls on the back with rear lights for eyes. We've got a slams GTR here. I wonder if anyone's going to be taking a selfie with it today. Alongside this one with some forged carbon wrap on the front end of it. And taking a closer look at this one, the number plate is very suitable. It's definitely something of a soldier's flashback. Someone needs to tell Sean that this doesn't have an RB, unless of course it does. He's also going for the amount of vents competition in his bonnet. And a few nice chromed turquoise details around the car. I really like chrome turquoise, so this this is something for me. Oh, revs, we have some revolutions. Within the GTR club, there is a skyline section in the corner with a couple of 33 GTRs and a Bayside Blue R34 GTR. There is a Nismo branded 350 GT Skyline with a Colt and an EP3 with violets as its colour of choice. Oh, they've got their cheeky pug on the steering wheel. Get off the steering wheel, boy. Oh, they really are a fan of pugs. They absolutely definitely are. To be honest, I'm surprised it's not a Peugeot. This purple Mark 1 MX-5, beyond its box of bits, has matched its gear stick very well with the exterior colour. Honestly, I, I need that to wake myself up. Oh. That's disgusting. Japan. There is also an Evo section with a Rally Arts Tommy Mackinnon Evo. This one's purple. That's a really nice colour with the bronze wheels, sets it off really nicely. And this MG Metro with a Catrum engine? Well, a Catrum tuned K Series Rover with a trap door and the little baby side pipe just out there. Mr. Two has triple nostrils and a very green, sparkly bonnet. In fact, the green on the camera stands out a lot more than it does in person. It looks black from a distance. So it's a black colour with green flake all the way down it. Oh, it's a carbon fibre bonnet, that's why it stands out more than the rest of the car. Right, the music over here has stopped and the pops and have started so I can film some of the cars in this section without risk of copyright including this wide arched Evo so right in the center is this R34 GTT in purple we've got an R33 a 200 SX without a rear bumper and two Supras with the white chaser on the end this looks beautiful a little bit cracked on the front but we'll forgive him he has fixed it with cable ties as you do this by the way is a Toyota chaser it's just a JZX 90 variant we've got the S50 next to the Zenki S14 that we heard arriving earlier and a really clean PS13 next to a Sora. You never see these, you've got a couple of Daihatsu charades parked next to each other. There's even an El Camino which is parked in our lineup of VXR8s. And over here beyond the caravan section we have a regular at Brands Hatch. I think this lives here. So if I've got my facts right, this very car won Le Mans in 1983 and here it is sat at Brands Hatch with tape holding its wings together. What a shame to see a piece of history just left here. So around at the trade slash food stand, there's often a lot of niceties hidden around, including the transit. Uh, no you're not. You are cars. So there is another R34 GTR with the Volks racing wheels. These famously weigh less than the tyres themselves. There is a Martini branded Polo and an intercooler with an Audi S3 stuck to the back of it, as well as a R34 GT 
GT and a yellow E90 3 Series with some funky headlights. And the number plate is actually just bolted to the tow hook. There is a Red Bull Sebastian Loeb Citroen C4 next to a Roush Ford Mustang with a 7 litre supercharged 427 V8. And whilst earlier we had the Le Mans winning Rothmans Porsche 956, now we have the 1970 Le Mans winner, the Porsche 917K. Ho oh, ho, he is a fan of his Abarth Scorpions. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I basically counted 30 on the outside and 12 on the inside. So 42 Scorpions in total. So I have been informed that it's 12 o'clock, which is now the Flash Cars UK stand are having a rev off. So let's see what we can hear. So it seems all of the cars are now starting up, even the El Camino. Looking forward to hearing that. And the VXR8s are sounding mean as well. It begins! coming up and I don't think I can hear much else <laughs> because everyone loves a white chaser <laughs> so after that sound off I think it's time to head down into the main paddock to have a look at what's down there well that's a first for me the positioning of that spoiler is something I haven't seen on a 370 before oh boy there is a lot more to look at including a Fiesta with its own mini version even with its number plates being driven by a minion and a very low Subaru and a fellow representative of the number 88 and oh, actually no I've had my haircut recently there is a Skoda from the RAF and an FCO with some very nicely crafted gills in the bonnet now this section is named the hyper paddock which doesn't seem to be full of any hypercars but it does have another white chaser because everyone loves a white chaser which is part next to this lilac fiesta with a secondary color of a darker purple and then golden wheels to match. Well, the Saab 95 has truly made a brave decision on his wheel choice. Oh, there's a tiger. Oh, oh look, this is pretty random. It's part of the car club, a Lotus Excel. Excellent. And this Fiesta does not take itself too seriously because its vents do not vent. It's been keyed probably on purpose. And everything has been bolted on other than the rubber ducky. Oh, the poor car. We've even got a plaster a screw and some can rings on the Ford badge. And we have one more section that we haven't yet seen, which which is just along here, starting with a couple of Audi R8s. Oh wow, he doesn't have to open his bonnet at the shows. There's also this IS200 in turquoise with pink pieces all around the engine bay. And next to the revving diesel Mercedes is this wild E4C6. Oh, it seems like the IS200 is revving now. And now the E46 is having a go, they're having a bit of a battle. 
And now we have this RX-8, whose wheels seem to be an RX-8 colour, which is kind of the colour there, but it's a lot brighter at the front and very dark at the rear. This seems to be the modified girls club, as made apparent by all of the pink details on a lot of their cars. Some with stereotypically feminine mods, and some, like these S2000s, with less stereotypically feminine mods. It's actually one of the best sections here. There's even a Mitsubishi Eclipse. In this country, I've probably only seen three of these. This one appears to be the turbo one due to the bulge in the bonnet. This EP3 is actually displaying my article. I wrote that. I even took that picture too. There's a few more pages. There we go. That's my article. But from Brands Hatch, that was pretty much that. So there's a lot of colourful cars in the car park, but we had a look around and there was not much more than what was on display here and I think we've seen quite a lot today so I hope you enjoyed that video go follow me on Instagram for all the weekly updates and highlights about these things that I go to but for now thanks for watching